Hi, today we have the presentation about the colon cancer patient who came with a pain. Okay, uh, and this presentation, I made it in a different way, that we will start with an algorithm instead of starting with, starting with the regular, I mean the standard presentation, incidents, clinical pictures, and so on. No, we'll start with an algorithm. This is an example for a real case or a case that you may face it in the OSCE or oral station in the exam or even in the real life, of course. So let's say that this is a patient, a colon cancer patient who came to you in the OPD or even in the ER, actually, they could present. And usually it could come in both the OSCE or oral station. Of course, we would like to know what is the complaint. Let's say the patient came with a left lower quadrant pain. And to add to the scenario, let's say he is around a 60 year old male who presented with a left lower quadrant pain for around, uh, let's say, two months. Now, the next step, of course, we would like to know the history and examination, detailed history and examination. I would mention the only positive things uh, in this patient. Let's say he has, in addition to the pain, uh, weight loss and anorexia, and he is vitally stable. And in examination, abdomen is, uh, I mean, a normal, nothing, no findings, and also in PR, uh, normal. Then our next step is we would like to have a differential diagnosis for this patient. We would mention them even if the patient didn't ask me what is the differential diagnosis. I have to make it a systematic that I should, after the history ex examination, I should give a differential diagnosis. Of course, on the top of the list is the colon cancer, according to his age, association with the weight loss, anorexia. And the second one is diverticulitis, then inflammatory bowel disease, and bowel ischemia is unlikely, honestly, but you have also to mention. Okay. Now, the labs you would request, uh, I made them as a, classif a classification for, for the labs, and the one which you needed here is the routine. The routine. I'm, I consider them as the six. Honestly, there are four of them are really routine. The remaining two is not like them. We have the CBC, RFT, LFT, coagulation profile. This is mostly, mostly, if not always, you would request them in every single case. CBC, RFT, LFT, coagulation profile. The remaining two is not like them, but I put it just like a checklist, so you have to remember them. Uh, one of them is the pregnancy test, because once the, the case is the female in the young age, not in this scenario, uh, of course, uh, but once uh, she is pregnant and you missed to request it, so this is a fatal mistake. And the second point is more in the clinical work than in the exam is the RBS. So we have the CBC, CBC, RFT, LFT, coagulation profile. These are the four, and then pregnancy test and the RBS. Now, we go, of course, to the imaging. We would request an upright chest X-ray, abdominal X-ray. Mostly, they would show nothing, example, in this scenario. And then we would need a CT abdomen with CT abdomen and pelvis with IV, IV oral, and rectal contrast. Example, we have an unobstructed mass in the descending colon, query cancer as reported by the radiologist. Again, uh, this point is really very important, CT abdomen and pelvis, because you should not mention only CT abdomen, you should include it in your sentence, CT abdomen and pelvis, and also with IV, oral, and rectal contrast if you need it, because they consider these points to be mentioned. After having the imaging and suspicion of cancer, of course, you would confirm it with a biopsy. So you would request a colonoscopy and biopsy. Example for this scenario, we have an adenocarcinoma. Then you need the tumor markers. Of course, not men and genetics, because as I told you, this algorithm, I try to make it for, as a standard algorithm for every single disease in the surgery, in the general surgery. So you can just follow this algorithm and you delete whatever you want and you complete the algorithm. So the tumor markers we have here, we have the CEA, alpha, alpha fetoprotein, and CA199. What's usually mentioned in box is the CEA alone. But when you read it uh, or in the clinical work, you found that you find that the oncologist, they request usually with it the CA199. And once I read, Papers, I found that really the CA199 should be requested with the CAA. Uh, and the alpha fetoprotein is for, uh, of course, if, if it involved the liver also, it may involve it. 
<clears throat> then the next step is the staging. We have done the CT uh, abdomen and pelvis, so what we need is the CT chest. And we don't need a contrast for this one. So only a plain CT chest is enough. This is not the commonest presentation for colon cancer that they present in this indirect way. But I'm giving you only one example, and we'll have we'll have later on different scenarios for a colon cancer. Someone who presented on the right side, someone who is presented with a bleeding, we'll have in, in, in the other videos. Now, after that is the tumor board. This is the most forgettable thing in the exam, the tumor board. And not only forgettable, sometimes you mention it in a wrong place. Because if you mention the tumor board after the imaging that you missed the biopsy, so you didn't have a tissue diagnosis, how would you discuss the case in the tumor board? And once you have a biopsy and you mention it in the tumor board, how would you discuss it in the tumor board without having a staging for that patient? They wouldn't really accept it. So please mention it at this point, at this moment. After that, you would like to have a plan of the management, which is medication intervention, MIS, medication intervention surgery, medication, analgesia, antibiotic, anticoagulant. Uh, please mention them. They wouldn't take time and they are not a negative point for you, even if not needed at this time. Analgesia, everyone would get analgesia. Antibiotic, you should have explanation for the antibiotic because either if the patient is perforated, I mean, as a presentation in the ER, so perforated, he would need antibiotic or antibiotic as a prophylaxis. And of course, of course, also the anticoagulant as the patient is cancer. Then intervention, I crossed this one, but actually you may need intervention for the patient, uh, which is, let's say, not uh, at this point, if the patient is non-obstructing and you need intervention, the example of that is the stenting. You may need it here at this step. If the patient came to the ER with three days of uh, pain, abdominal pain, and the patient is non-obstructing, but not completely, so you would need uh, a stenting especially in the left side of the colon, not, uh, not in the rectum. So there is a place for intervention. I mean the colonoscopy and the stenting, but not at this place before it should be done. Okay, now the third point is the surgery. Surgery, you have two points to be considered, the preparation and the consent. Preparation, you have to prepare a patient for, uh, let's say, bowel surgery. And that is, will be discussed in a different presentation because preparation, it, it has its own... Uh, items for all, uh, preparation for a colon cancer, preparation for a thyroid cancer, or, or for a pancreas cancer. That is for, it will be discussed in a different presentation. Now, the second point is the consent. Also, this has a standard items to be mentioned. And I will discuss it later. Example for them that you have to mention the type of the surgery. Why do you need the surgery? Is there any alternative? Is there a possibility of uh, abortion of the procedure and also whether this will be done uh, done in lab or open and the consent also should include the complications example for that is lab or open left hemicolectomy plus minus stoma now what's next the post-op care and the complications you should mention when you would like to start the diet, when to remove the NGT, Foley's catheter, and it's good to mention EROS. Yes, it's good to mention. It's difficult to mention it in the OSCE station for the patient, but you have sometimes you can use the medical terms even to show the examiner that I know this point. Uh, one important and tricky point that patient may ask how to treat a specific complication. Yes, the complications and the treatment for complications usually in the oral stations, not in the OSCE. But what is the, what is the time to be asked for uh, treatment of a complication when the patient asks you? How would you treat such complication if it happened to me? So here you have to explain. Now after that, the histology. And once you have the histology, the final histology, you have to discuss it in the tumor board again. And the next step is to decide whether the patient would need adjuvant chemotherapy. Again, the radio, uh, radio hormonal, biological, not in this scenario. This is, will be later needed in the breast cancer. This is, we will use the same algorithm for that, patient, for that scenario. Now, the next step is follow-up surveillance. I mentioned this one in the previous uh, presentation. When you would need the, uh, I mean, how, 
how much is the frequent we, you would need the history examination uh, labs in, in the form of CEA, the CT cap, colonoscopy, and finally, you would need the prognosis. The prognosis, unfortunately, you have to memorize it very well, especially for the breast and the colon cancer. Yes, you will be asked about the prognosis uh, sometimes. This is the end of the presentation and the end of the algorithm. But as I told you, this algorithm will try to, to use it in the other uh, videos and series. I have around maybe 20 uh, cases of uh, in the general series that I have made and ready for a presentation. So I will, I will make the uh, series uh, one by one using the same algorithm, hopefully. See you in the next presentation.